Hello and uh, welcome to week nine of uh, Man and His Fatherhood. It's been a, a great nine weeks. I have thoroughly enjoyed each and every one of the presenters and the presentations, and I hope y'all have. And um, well, I'm just honored to uh, be here and presenting, uh, like I said, uh, a man and his fatherhood. And um, um, let me get started and let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just uh, come before you. Uh, Lord, we ask that um, the things we uh, say, uh, Lord, just um, lift you up. Lord, that you'll get the glory and the honor for fatherhood. Lord, you're the example. Lord, that uh, you have, uh, you've got a game plan for each and every one of us. And Lord, we just ask that you just give us some wisdom. Lord, we have the word. Lord, we have the game plan. And Lord, we just ask that you just give us a conviction of heart. Lord, to give us the discipline that we need to follow through, to follow through on your plan. Father, uh, we just uh, uh, love you and, uh, and rejoice in the fact, Lord, that uh, you'll be present in our uh, attempts at uh, being the best father that we can be. We just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, first disclaimer, I'm not a perfect father. Um, I've got two beautiful kids. I've got a son who's 30, a daughter 33. And um, I, I tell you, we have just been blessed uh, by them. And uh, hear what I'm saying. It, it's It's been a blessing, absolute blessing. And uh, um, disclaimer is I'm not, I'm not a perfect father, nor is my wife the perfect uh, mother. And uh, we've made a lot of mistakes. And... Um, I guarantee it, if you ask anybody, uh, um, being a parent, being a father is not easy. It's, uh, it's, um, it's work. It's, um, uh, there's, there's the high times and there's the low times. But uh, we have been blessed and um, uh, both of our children are uh, married and uh, active in their church. And uh, they love the Lord with all their heart, with all their mind, with all their strength. As a, as a parent, if, uh, if we can say that uh, when we're all done uh, raising them, then I think we've probably done a, a decent job. And um, so if you'll just bear with me, we'll go through a few things here. Um, like I said, it's not easy. Um, it's the most important thing we'll ever do in our lives. And uh, I think most of us as fathers, we jump into this thing without a clue what we're doing. Um, we're either going to be the father that our father was, or we say we're not going to be the father that I was. So I think a uh, few of us really go into fatherhood with a real idea of what it's all in, what it's all about. Uh, if anything, to be totally honest, it's, it's probably one of those things. We, we get into fatherhood where in the heat of the moment, if you know what I mean, you're looking into the eyes of the bride, uh, your wife, uh, of your dreams, and one of you goes, Let's have a baby, and that's how fatherhood really begins for both of us. Uh, we haven't read a book. We got no idea what we're doing, but we just kind of jump in there with both feet, and uh, and here we go. So uh, we have more. We have access to more information now than ever before, and uh, uh, but few of us do. If if anybody's going to read the book, it's usually our wives, and we're the last ones in the world that sit there and actually think that you know. Uh, we're going to need any help raising raising our kids, and uh, I tell you, it's 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 kind of like a, a couple of weeks ago. I I had a steel backpack blower, and uh, I had an internal part I needed to replace, and um, so uh, I'm pretty handy with my hands, but I had no idea how to get there. I didn't want to disassemble the whole thing. I didn't want to take out any more screws or take off any more parts than absolutely necessary. But, uh, so what do you do? What do we do? Uh, like all of us, we go to YouTube. We go to the internet. We, we find somebody who's done there, been there, uh, somebody that is going to prevent us from, like I said, uh, uh, screwing up, making the mistakes, taking out more screws than we need. So, so that's what I did. I, I, I found somebody. I, I followed the directions and, uh, from stop to start and, uh, and it was successful, you know, and, and I think you, you, your biggest fear, you start a project like that, what's your biggest fear? 
uh, without that instruction, you're going to tear into it. You're going to get the whole thing apart. You're going to have it in a million pieces. You've made a mess of it. And uh, we end up taking this whole thing. We throw it into a box. We carry the box. We take it to the professional and say, here, I don't know what I've done. I've made a mess of it. If I haven't destroyed it, and uh, here, put it back together, fix it. And, and, and I think sometimes... Uh, uh, that without having a plan for fatherhood, that's exactly what's going to happen. Uh, we're, we're going to end up, you know, stumbling through this whole fatherhood thing. We're going to forest gump our way through it. We'll make a mess of it. And, and uh, we're going to box up all the pieces of our children and we're going to take them to a professional and say, fix it. So, uh, um, look, I, I, I'm not throwing stones. I'm not pointing fingers and... You know, Look, this is not a, uh, it's not a stencil, it's not a guarantee, and uh, if you're a father watching this and you've already raised your children and, and you said, hey, I wish I could do a do-over and uh, things didn't turn out, and, 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 and you're saying, Harold, I did all those things. I, I followed, you know, the guidelines. I, I, you know, God was in, in our family and in our home and, uh, and uh, you know, we, we did all the things that, you know, you're saying, and, and you know, I, I, hey, I, I, I'm, I don't know who you are, but that is not what this is about. And uh, we're not here to judge what's happened in the past. And uh, you can have three children in a home, and uh, they're all going to three turn out different. Every, every one of them. They've been exposed to the same environment, the same teachings, the same parents. And uh, anybody who has more than one child will know that they're all individuals. So so don't sit here and think that uh, yeah I'm I'm saying if you do this that you're going to have the perfect child it's not going to happen and uh, but what you're going to do is you're going to better your odds you're going to make it uh, uh, you're going to make it a little bit easier you know down the road I think if you have a game plan if we, if we know where we're going if we if we do. Uh, uh, really, uh, essentially, what God has given us is 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 the guidebook, is the rule book on raising children. Um, uh, listen to me. You can't have you can't have fatherhood without manhood. You know, you you got to be a man. You got to step up. You got to man up to it. You got to own it. Um, you can't uh, flounder through this uh, fatherhood without without stepping up and being a man and, and, and being in control, uh, um, your children will see right through it. Uh, they're, they're not stupid, and, and, and they'll know, and they'll see it. Um, Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6 and 7. Most men will proclaim their goodness, but who can find a faithful man? The righteous man walks in his integrity, and his children are blessed after him. Like I said earlier, you, you can't forest gump your way through it. You got to have a plan. Um, fathers, you need to you need to have loyalty, unfailing love, faithfulness, and those are the qualities that you're going to need. You, you, you can't do this on your own power. I promise you. So here we go. Let's let's start. If you got your study guide, we're on page twenty four. Um, we're in week nine and. Um, uh, get your pencil and paper, and, and we're going to fill in some blanks here. Uh, each one of us is going to have to stand before the Father. I, I, I say many times, I, 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 we're all going to stand before Jesus one day, and I, I think sometimes it's not what I've done, but what I have not done. I'm going to, I'm going to have to probably answer for why didn't you do this, Harold, or why didn't you do that? And I think as fathers, we're going to have to answer for why weren't we the head of the household? Why, why weren't we leading our children the word? Why weren't we uh, 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 spending more time with our children? And, and that's probably one of the biggest things. We, we, we don't spend time. We, uh, we find time for everything else. Uh, Moses is saying, uh, essentially, uh, God's instructed us. Uh, he's a... Uh, he, 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 Moses is saying, keep to the statutes, keep to the commands, and your sons and grandsons, you know, love the Lord, love your God with, love, love the Lord your God, uh, uh, giving you to be on your, giving you to be on, uh, you need to have him on your heart constantly. You can't, you can't flounder in the word. 
um, you're going to have to repeat this to your children over and over. They're, they're not going to get it without you being in the center of it. God has a fatherhood plan. Loving God with all your heart and your soul, it's, it's a non-negotiable, guys. Um, you'll accept no excuses. Like I said, I don't want to have to stand before the Father one day and go, where were you? Why weren't you there? Why were you the absent father? You know, why, why were you... Why did your kids not uh, not hear you? Why why did your kids not see you pray? And uh, um, I I can't imagine. I don't want my kids to ever say I never saw my father pray. I'm not talking about a simple blessing, but I never saw my father pray. And, and, uh, my father's never prayed with me. I, I don't ever remember my dad praying. That's not what you want to. That's not what you want your children to ever say about you. God sees all. Our, our kids see it too. And uh, and we're going to have to answer for all of it. Men, the only one who keeps you from loving God with all your heart is yourself. We can find time for everything in the world we want to do. We can, we can, uh, um, uh, we can find time for uh, all those things that distract us. But if uh, we're not loving the God with all our heart, with all our soul... It's, uh, it's because we have found something else that's more important. We're, we're not focused on what, uh, what, what is important. We, we, we need to step back sometimes and say, what are the distractions in my life? Where do I spend most of my time? Uh, why are we in church every Sunday? Guys, wow. That's, that's, uh, uh, we'll get into that later. Uh, the truth is... Uh, that you will not be a good leader unless you're a great follower. And and that's so true. I, you can't expect somebody else to follow you unless you set the example. And uh, and if you want your children to follow you, to listen to, uh, listen to the Word, take what you have to heart, if they're not seeing you following Christ, um, uh, they're just going to see it's a moot point. And like I said... Our children are wise that, that they'll see right through it, guys. Um, who or what do we follow? Uh, you know, I, I guarantee you, it, and I, I don't want to step on any toes, but I th I would say most, most of us men can spout off more sports statistics. We can spout off... Uh, um, more about the things that we enjoy, uh, the the ballistics of uh, our, our favorite hunting round. We we know all that, but I just wonder sometimes, could we could we sh could we share uh, Bible verses with the same authority as we can share uh, sports scores or who's starting and uh, who's winning what game on what week? Um, what's what, what's most important in our lives? The truth is, um, you got to be a good follower. You got to be. Uh, you got to follow Christ. Mark chapter eight, verse thirty-four says, "And when he called the people unto, unto him, with his disciples also, he said, unto them, whoever will come after me, let them deny themselves and take up the cross." Uh, Keith Boggs said, in our booklet here and i tell you what this this hits this hits you know hit you square between the eyes he says here each man is one of two things you're either self-centered or god-centered i i read that over and over and i wanted to argue with it and i said well can you not be part of a little bit of both can't can't we be sitting on the fence can't we can't we be self-centered and god-centered and the more i thought about it you're not. You're either one or the other. You, you can't go down both roads. I, and um, being self-centered and God-centered is uh, is is our choice. How are we going to lead our family? We can't lead our family if we're self-centered. We've got to be God-centered. Um, you take that same question. How would your family answer that? If they said, hey, God, Dad is God-centered or self-centered? Fill in the blank. What do you think your kids would say? What do you think your wife would say? That's tough, isn't it? 
Number four, we stand before a holy God, the Father in heaven. May we come to realize that our life is always lived before him. Like I said, we can't hide. We can hide a lot of things. Uh, we can hide things from our wives. We can hide things from our children. We can hide things from our church friends, Sunday school friends, people we work with. But guess what? We're not hiding anything from God. We can put on the best show in the world and we can strut through this church like we've got it going on and, and, and our family is uh, um, living under the authority of God. And, and sometimes, guys, if it wasn't for church, our children may not hear the, a, a single thing that's of God unless they were here. It's not being taught in the home. God's got a plan. We, we've got to do this, guys. How we live before the Father ultimately affects how we live before our family. If, um, if, if we're not living, just like the last cha eight chapters, if, if we're not living... If we're, if we're not being the path and the mind, the time, the purity, the faithfulness, the discipleship, the wife that we've been studying for the last eight weeks, if we're not doing that, um, then ultimately that, that affects our family. And uh, it's going to affect them all in a different way. And, uh, but that, that really hurts sometimes if, if we're not living, if we're not living out that way, if we're not, uh, if we don't live before the Father, then um, I can guarantee you the way we live before our family is a, dupe, is, is, is a pretty good indication. Uh, we have to stand before our family. We've stood, we stand before God. We stand before our family. Um, in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 2, Moses says, uh, God's instructing you, do this so you can prosper. Um, if, if that's no other reason to get on board and, uh, to, and to man up and be a father, then, then uh, and, and again, I, I haven't arrived. I'm not there. I, I've raised my kids, and yeah, like everybody else, if, if I could have a do-over in anything, it would probably be, I'd love to raise my kids. I, there's a lot I did right. There's a whole lot I did wrong. But um, God just says, do it and prosper. And prosper doesn't mean in, in, in riches and gold and silver. That just means you're going to prosper as a family, that your kids are going to prosper. Um, uh, what's your reward? Your reward is... Uh, so your children will prosper, just as we've heard of the sins of the father. Well, guess what? It goes both ways. You can have the children suffer for the sins of the father, or your children will prosper because uh, you brought them in a godly home and you taught them the word, and uh, there was consistency. And uh, so, guys, um, stepping on the the next one. Uh, my walk, Colossians chapter 2, um, verses 6 through 10. As you have received Christ, now go walk in him. What does that walk look like? What does that walk look for most of us? If we're in Christ, then our walk should be different. We, we, should, uh, we shouldn't look like the world. And, uh, and you know, as I was studying there, this, you know, it, your walk, it, it should be, I mean, it should be the gifts of the Spirit. I mean, it, it, your children should, when they look at you, they should see uh, love and peace and joy and patience and kindness and goodness and uh, faith and gentleness, um, uh, self-control. What, what does our self-control look like, you know? Um, like I said, children aren't stupid. Uh, we have to win every battle with our kids. I mean... They'll beat you down and they'll win it, you know. Say what you mean, mean what you say, but you've got to say it with self-control. You've got to say it with peace, with love, with gentleness and kindness. And, uh, uh, and, and it needs to be consistent and constant. Um, uh, values control our behavior. Um, how do we behave with our wife when we get upset? Our kids see it. Uh, uh, 
what's the first thing we do? Don't 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 fuss with your siblings, but then your, your kids see you fussing with your wife. I just uh, uh, the consistency. They're going to see it, and uh, uh, they may not question you about it, but trust me, down the road. Uh, they're going to play back these things that they saw as they grow older. And they're, and, uh, they're going to say, Dad preached this, but he did this. So uh, uh, be consistent. Have, have a, uh, be in control of your behavior. Um, we act on the basis of what we believe, what really matters, what's right and wrong. Um, what What is... What is the things we act on and react on? I, I think as fathers, and we were talking about that a while ago, um, work. We, we can get so tied up in, in work and success and uh, um, the things that are important. Uh, um, I, let me step on some toes. What's important on Sunday morning? Uh, ball, little league ball, or church? Uh, you hear people say, well, it's just hard to get the family up. I, I can't get them up, and it's it's tough. And to be here by 9, 10 o'clock sometimes is tough. But, guys, let me tell you what. I, I, I'll step on the toes and offend you. You can have a, golf, uh, you can have a, a softball tournament in Kennesaw, Georgia at 8 o'clock. You'll be there three minutes or 30 minutes early and have stopped and had breakfast, and the whole family will be there ready. So uh, don't say you, you can't be there, you can't do it. Uh, uh, that's family time. Sunday morning's family time. That's pancake time. Well, Sunday morning ought to be worship time with your family. So uh, your kids and watching it, uh, that consistency. You want them to be in church as an adult, uh, and they look at you and say, well, it was only important one day a month. Uh, come on, kids, let's go to church. Well, it's not that important last week, Dad. Why are we going this week? So, guys, yeah. Uh, give your kids more credit. Uh, they're seeing right through this. Um, here's another one to hit tough. Uh, who influences the core values in your home? They're truly the leader. Who uh, who is the one that's uh, who who's the one that teaches the core values in your home? Who's the one that's teaching your kids? Who's the one that's sharing these things with us? Um, <laughs> You know, for most of us guys, uh, we go to work, we come home, we beat our chest and think that, you know, we're the great white hunter and provider and we've done it all. And our wife, she's gotten up, she's got the kids to school, she's got them dressed, she's got the lunches made, the backpacks ready, she gets them off to school, she goes and works an eight-hour day. She comes home, she does the cooking, the cleaning, the laundry, the wash, she's been to the grocery store, um, she's doing the homework, uh, she's laying down, she's reading with the kids, praying with the kids, and then we come in here and act like we're in control. Uh, guys, it just don't work that way, trust me. Um, who, who's leading the church with those core values, that's, that's the leader. And, and, and it, it, when this is all done and over this section nine, you can say, well, I'm going to step up and I'm going to be the dad. Well, some of us are going to have to earn it back, you know. We, we've been that non-participant for so long, and uh, we're just not going to come in and say, okay, now we're in charge because, uh, you know, we, we handed over that right a long time ago. We're going to have to earn it back. And, uh, and, uh, and that, guys, she ain't going to give it up easy because it's working for her. We're going to come into the picture, and we're just going to screw it up. She's, uh, she's, got, a, she's got a plan. She knows what she's doing. And also, we come in here, and uh, we're going to try to uh, take over this leadership role, and uh, uh, she don't trust us. So, uh, guys, we may have to take some baby steps in this, but uh, I tell you, if, if you're going to do it, start off. Let the family see in the Word. Start sharing the Word with them. Take those baby steps. Uh, let them see that joy, peace, love, that self-control, and uh, slowly but surely, uh I guarantee you, she's she's going she's going to give over that control back to you when uh, when we're ready and we've stepped up to it and uh, and and she believes you know this isn't just going to be a, something that's just a, a short lived um, something that you know in a few months is going to fizzle out. So uh, 
the other thing, um, we got to have a we got to have a clear vision. And uh, what's your vision for your family? Take a moment, and if you could, uh, if you could just uh, close your eyes and imagine what what would what would your family look like? What what's the vision you want for your family? And I mean, if you if you could do anything, if you were the uh, king of the world, uh, what would your family look like to you? What's that? What's that perfect image? And uh, we have to have vision. We have to know where we're going. Just as in, uh, I think it was uh, uh, lesson two, lesson three. You, we got to have a path. What's our path? What's our vision? They're they're one and the same. So, uh, uh, guys, um, go back to lesson lesson two and uh, and look at what's your path. We need to have a path and a vision. And and what's the best for our children? Uh, personally. I think it ought to be the fullness of God. You want your children to have the fullness of God. You want them to, uh, to, uh, to each and every day just feel the Spirit of God in their home. And uh, Proverbs says, where there's no vision, there's no, uh, where there's no vision, there's no path. And uh, guys, we, we've got to, we've got to step up and, uh, and uh, what what's what's best for our family? What do we want? Does your family fit in your vision? Um, vision calls the believer. Um, uh, great vision precedes great achievement. Vision's a clear picture of what could be, fueled by the conviction that it should be. If you've got a vision, then then what is that vision? And do you have the conviction to make it happen? Is it going to come to fruition, or is it just going to be a pipe dream that uh, you'd love for your family to uh, uh, come together and, uh, and be on one accord when it comes to, to church and studying the Word and uh, what our priorities are and what, what's important in our lives? So uh, we have to walk with the critical verse, guys. Um, What's that verse that's on your heart? Do you have a life verse? Does that life verse include your family? Uh, you, you need a verse that each and every day talks to you and drives you and pushes you. Uh, in Philippians, I'll just kind of paraphrase. It just says, uh, Just as you have obeyed God working in you for his good purpose. Um that that's that's what that verse should be. I mean, is it is it uh, are you obeying God's word, and is it going to be for His purpose? Uh, if you've got vision for your family, if you've got uh, uh, a, a critical verse, then 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 ultimately it ought to just be for God's purpose. And uh, and when it's God's purpose, it's gonna it's gonna correlate to the best purpose for your family's life. Uh, Again, that verse should compel the burden. There, there should be a burning desire, and that verse should can continue to push that and drive you. Uh, that word must become flesh and dwell among your children, uh, your your church, your community. Um, are you sharing that word? Are you sharing that verse with your family? Look, guys, it's the hardest thing in the world to do is sometimes you come home from work, everybody's busy, you fix dinner, you got to get baths, homework, uh, you, 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 you forgot the poster board, you're back at Kroger. I, look, I've, I've been there, I've done it, and uh, last thing in the world sometimes is to set the whole family down, find 15, 20 minutes just to share the word as a family. And uh, and it's, um, it's, it's sometimes not in the schedule but guys you got to make it it's got to be part of your schedule if you can find time for bass if you can time to eat you can time find time for all those other things and uh, 15 minutes five minutes whatever it takes again start off with baby steps but to share the word as a family and uh um sometimes if you can't do it as a family then uh, that when you're uh, putting a child to bed, man, share the word with them at that time. It doesn't have to be deep. It doesn't have to be out of a book. You don't have to have your Bible open. You ought to have enough word on your heart that you ought to be able to sit down, pray with your child, share a word, um, uh, whatever's going on in their lives, whether they've got a, 
a prayer burden about a spelling test or whatever, you ought to be able to draw something out of the Word, Lord, that, that, uh, that's applicable and uh, that you could share with your child at the spur of the moment. Um, number two, my wife. Uh, as a family shepherd, you have to lead it, guys. And uh, let me tell you what, if it wasn't for wise, we'd, uh, we'd have just spiraled out of control a long time ago. Uh, it's easy to sit here and say, well, uh, you're going to lead it. You know, you're going to have to lead that family but um, uh, to leading leading the family means to love your wife uh, like I said you you can't come in here and demand that you've got control unless you're doing all these other things and uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 5 23 a husband is the head as Christ is the head of the church I can't lead unless I'm loving my wife. Uh, Johnny Hunt, a couple of weeks ago at a men's conference, I heard him say, uh, somebody goes, well, I just, I, I just, I just not in the church. I, I don't love church, but you know, I, they think they're a Christian and they just say, well, I love the church. He said, you know, that'd be like somebody telling him, Johnny, I like you, but I don't like your wife. Well, you, you can't do that. You you can't love one without the other. I, I can't sit here and say uh, that um, I'm in Christ and not love it. Just as Christ loved the church, I need to love my wife the same way. And uh, and, and there, there's there's no other way to say it. Hey, guys, again, it ain't easy. You know, we all have our moments. We all have our trials and tribulations. And, and, uh, and we all see things differently, but... Uh, uh, Sometimes we just got to suck it up. She sucks it up, and uh, but we've just got to love our wives. Uh, uh, remember what I said earlier. To be a leader, um, you got to be a great follower to be a great leader. And uh, and like I said, you can hide a lot of things from your wife and your children. You can't hide it from God, but your wife still sees it. She still she still sees it. She she understands when you're on that mountaintop with her when when the love is just overflowing and and then when you you've got tough waters ahead of you and you're not seeing eye to eye and you're not speaking and uh but your children see it you know you, you you've got to as as a family shepherd you have to love her as a, as a shepherd loves his sheep and he'll do anything give his life he'll fight for it he looks for it he's got their best at heart he's he's leading them you know to the pastures to the cool waters and uh and we have to we have to do the same way with our wives guys and uh um talking about it earlier you know uh, wives have been in control for a long time we've let them you know we we've turned it over to them and uh and the god we, we've got to love our wives back into being leaders and to, to be in the lead of the family mm. um I have to lift her up. If, if, if they always say men aren't readers, but if you read one book, leave, leave, read love and respect. You can throw away all the other marriage counseling books, and I'm, I'm telling you, if you leave, if you read love and respect, it's so easy, guys. I mean, they, they've narrowed it down. Wives want to feel security. They want to feel love. They want to feel. Um, that they're appreciated and uh guys man if we can master that that's our relationship with our wives will turn 180 degrees i mean it's just um it's going to make a huge difference uh it's not easy and uh I think so many times people hop into marriage thinking it's going to be that Hallmark movie kind of thing, and it's not. Uh, I don't know of anybody who would say their marriage is a Hallmark movie moment, and uh, it probably is at times, or it probably has been at some times, and uh, you know, maybe that uh, first uh, month, couple of years, you're buried, and then you know, real life kicks in, but. Uh, um, it, it, sometimes it's just not going to happen. 
the book doesn't even talk about it, but you can't talk about wives, you can't talk about family, you can't talk about manhood without talking about divorce. Um, we can skip over it, but you know, I, if we were in a room together, guys, you know what I'd do? I'd say, look to the left, look to the right, and guess what? Statistically, 50% of us in that room are going to be divorced. We'll be divorced at some time in our lives. It doesn't matter with whether we're uh, Christians, if we're uh, faithful Christian church uh, attendees or not. It does not matter. Half of those in, our, in this room would be divorced if we were all meeting together and not the, the way we are. None of us think it's going to happen, but it can happen. It will happen. I've known a lot of people get divorced. I'm 60 years old. I would say most of the neighbors I've grown up with, we we lived in a in a neighborhood where everybody was our same age. We all raised our kids at the same age. And uh, I would say, I probably could count on one hand the number of people that we raised our kids with. Uh, we've been married uh, 35, 36 years. Most of them are divorced. Um, it doesn't work. It, it, it's going to change the family dynamics forever. Um, you can sit there and say, well, my kids deserve a happy, uh, happy parents. Uh, they, they deserve to have a happy father and a happy wife. No, they don't. No, they don't at all. They deserve to have a home with two parents, a husband, a father, and a mother. That's what they deserve. Um, if you think you're going to get a divorce and get away from them, you're not. Because let me tell you what, every time one of your children have a birthday, have a graduation, get married, have a grandchild, any and everything, you're going to be with her. She's going to be across the room at the same events. So if you do not like your wife and you think you can get a divorce and just get out of there, it's not going to happen. She's going to be with you until the day you die. It's just that simple. And it will change your family dynamics forever. And you think, well, well, I'll, I'll, I'll still be this great father. I can still do exactly what Harold's saying here, and I will, I will follow that. Guess what? It won't happen, guys. I'm telling you. Um, you think you'll spend every weekend with them? Well, that may happen for a while, and then when they get active in all the things that a, that a kid gets active in, and a preteen and a teenager, guess what? You're the last thing on their list. They're tired of living out of suitcase. They're not going to go pack up and go spend the weekend with dad. And you've already got a second family, and they feel like the outcast. Guess what? It's not going to happen. You're going to change that relationship with your kids. So I'm here to tell you, no matter what you think, no matter whether you're getting along with your wife or not, if you love your kids, suck it up. Next, my wealth if I didn't offend everybody already. Wealth is your children. He's not talking about here. He's not talking about wealth and as, as far as uh, his riches. Your, your wealth here, he's talking about your children. It says in Psalms, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb, the fruit of the womb is the reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Be happy as the man who has a quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with their enemies in the gate. Children are an honor and a privilege to have, guys. I'm not saying everybody has to have them, but if you do have them, you should, uh, you should be absolutely um, feel privileged that God's blessed you with your children. Um, the Christian home should be a place of encouragement. Uh, children should find refuge. They should find a loving heart, watchful eye, listening ear, helping hand. Home should meet their needs. Um, this is, this is, this is that the this is natural for a child to learn to trust God and want to live for Him. They're a blessing. They know it. Treat them like it, guys. Um, don't provoke them. Um, if you want your kids to be spiritually sharp, then you're going to have to be spiritually sharp. If you want your kids to uh, be in the Word, you're going to have to be in the Word. If uh, 
if you want your kids to understand uh, uh, God's heart and his purpose in their life and, and direction for them as young adults and they're seeking it out, well, guys, you got to be there too. You can't have spiritual talks with the child who's looking for spiritual things unless you can talk the same lingo. Um, again, the kids are watching. They're listening. Um, uh, recently, I heard so many kids are not in church because they, they, they say uh, hypocrisy is the world's worst thing to them. And, uh, and if they've seen hypocrisy, chances are you're going to have a hard time uh, with them as adults. And I, again, guys, I'm not saying, I, I'm here to tell you, you can do all the right things and kids have free will and kids can do what they want. And, um, uh, and if your kids aren't where you want them spiritually as adult, uh, nobody's saying that you did anything wrong, better your odds, uh, get in the word with them, uh, be spirit, 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 spiritually sharp. Um, Christian discipleship begins at home. Guys, I, I'm telling you, the hardest thing sometimes it is is to find a couple guys that you can do life with, that you can disciple, that you can love on and, uh, and share uh, where you've been, what you're doing, and, uh, and just disciple and bring a man up. And guys, you know, we're looking everywhere, and we've got it right there in our own family. And if, and if you're a father of kids, that's your priority. That That's where your focus ought to be. You, you might not need to be uh, sitting at a coffee house on a Saturday morning. Maybe you need to be sitting at the dining room table with your kids, discipling them. So uh, don't feel like um, you don't have a place to disciple. Man, God's given you that... that uh, uh, blessing and uh, your wealth those uh those arrows in your quiver those are your children and uh keep them sharp and and, and prepare them uh, uh the other thing church is um church is a partner sunday school is a partner um don't hand over your kids to somebody else it's not going to happen and uh I read a book recently, and I think this probably started back in the 50s and 60s, and before then, uh, fathers and homes, that's where our kids learn uh, spiritual things. That's where we read the Bible and spent time, and uh, and it was, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago, and uh, we turned them over to Sunday school and somebody else, and we said, okay, here's my kids. You're the professional. Raise them to be the little Christians that they ought to be, and, uh, and guys, that doesn't work. You can't spend an hour with the child, even if you're attending once a week. You can't spend an hour hour a week with the child and teach them all that they need to know. So uh, the Sunday school, your small group for your children, uh, uh, the church, uh, all those things are great, and uh, and they play a part in it. But we've ultimately we've got we've got the biggest part of the pie there. It's it's still it's still up to us, and uh, we're going to have to answer for that. Um, but many parents are concerned with with all kinds of other things. Uh, uh, the older I got, uh, and, and as your child, as your children grow up, your priorities change. And uh, I I think so many times as as young parents, man, we're we're interested in all the all the wrong things. We can find time, like I said. We can't time, find time for a 15-minute uh, Bible study in the evening, but we can find two hours to play Little League ball or soccer or something. Uh, um, we as parents are more worried about work and success and, and driving the right cars and buying the right house uh, in the right address. we got to have the right zip code. Um, uh, we're, we're worried about our kids' grades. We we all want the bumper sticker saying our kids in honor roll. So can I tell you one thing? It doesn't matter. Your C student's going to do just fine. And if you want the bumper stickers bragging rights, um, man, I'd love to have Sunday school stickers that said my 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 kid attended four weeks in a row. That's bragging rights. Um, uh, your kid's going to be fine. You know. Uh, um, 
so keep keep the main thing the main thing. All those things that, and I was as guilty of it as all. I mean, you know, we did all those things, and uh, uh, but you have to keep them in um, perspective. And sometimes it gets out of perspective. But uh, uh, right now, our focus is our children, how we're doing it, and uh, and all these other things um, should fall to the wayside when it comes down to doing the doing the things uh, things of the lord opposed to things of the world um here's another sentence if you're following along in your book you can lose your family without getting a divorce um y'all understand that guys that um you can just be the non-participant you're you're just a fly on the wall um your children, if, if they need something, who do they call to? They call to mom. You're, you're not there. And if I can be totally transparent, when uh, when our kids were little, I, I was guilty of it. Man, I was, uh, I came from a white collar family and I was doing blue collar and I, I needed to prove to them and myself that I, I could be successful. My wife's a stay at home mom. I'm thinking I'm going to have to work her 40, my 40, and I was working 100 hours a week and, uh, and then one day my wife said, "She, I goes, uh, I'm a single parent. Uh, you're you're not there. Why are we married? You're you're not even part of this family. And uh, wow, what a you know talk about a thump in the head. And uh, and she was right. And uh, now at the time I didn't realize it because I'm still trying to justify. I'm doing the right things. You know, I'm 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 padding the checking account and." And you know, uh, the kids are going to have new tennis shoes. And, and you know, when it comes time to go to church camp, we're going to be able to afford to write the check. And uh, it was all about success and uh, about me looking good, um, uh, being able to keep, keep up with the neighbors. And uh, and and I'll tell you guys, it uh, it was one of those things. Uh, well, I'll tell you the truth. I ended up spending $100 an hour to pay a therapist to tell me I'm working too many hours. And, um, but I would go sometimes days. I'd get up before the sun came up and I'd, I'd come home after the kids were asleep and I'd do this day in, day out. And, uh, um, uh, as hard as it was at the time, I'm glad my wife said that. It, had she not said that when my kids were little, um, then I may have spent my whole entire chance as, as a father doing exactly that. But it was... A, that was that moment in my life. I said, you know, I've I've got to reprioritize, and uh, there's nothing wrong with hard work. In uh, today's society, it seems like uh, work is a four-letter word. But uh, uh, again, we've got to keep it in perspective, and the family comes first. And however you juggle that, but uh, but don't get caught up. I did, and uh, uh, I, you know, spent half of what I made on the therapist anyway, so I got nowhere. So. Uh, Let's see. We stand before the future, guys. Um, as I said earlier, uh, we've got one shot at this, one shot to get it right. It's up to us. One chance. We don't get any do-overs. Um, we're touching our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, and our great-grandchildren for the next hundred years. We're going to be making a difference in the lives of those. Um I, I, I tell you, we were at a funeral just just last week, and uh, young man who died too young. Um, to see how he has touched and changed his family's tree is absolutely amazing. Um, we stand before the future here. As, uh, as you'll see in the text here, the Christian home is called to develop the lives of many. It's not negotiable. God has said this. He, he said, we've got to develop the lives of our children. Your family is only a one link in the chain that brought you to this day. Just as I said, that young man at the funeral, uh, he, was, he, was, he was the first link. And when they asked people, to raise our hands, those that have been directly affected by him leading the first person to Christ, that link just went on and on. 
Wish you, wish you could have seen the number of hands that uh, have known, come to know Christ because of one person. And, uh, and that's us. I don't care what your background is. I don't know. I don't care uh, if you were raised in a Christian home or what your background is or all the baggage that you brought into this marriage. You can change it. You, you can't use an excuse. You can't say, well, this is the way I was brought up and I don't know any better and I can't be a good father because I didn't have a, I didn't have a, a good uh, example. I, I, I had a great dad. I mean, I, you know, my dad was great. Um, he was a good man, a man in integrity, and, uh, but he had no father. His father died at five. And I remember asking my mom one time, I said, how's dad such a good dad? How, where did he learn it? And she said he always wanted to be the dad he didn't have. So, uh, if, uh, if you're using the excuse that you don't know how to be a dad because, uh, uh, you don't have that example, just be the dad that you wish you could have had. Be the dad you want to be for your children. Uh, families drift because they lack the male leadership. Um, I did scouts for years and, uh, you'd be surprised the number of single mamas that would bring a child to scouts and go, he needs a man in his life. Um, and, and that's a humbling experience when, when a mother sits there and says, there's, there's nobody, there's no man there. There's a father somewhere, obviously, but, um, he's obviously not part of their lives. And when somebody turns a child over to a total stranger, goes, he needs a man in his life, guys. That's why, that's why families will flounder. That's why they have, uh, uh, that's that's why they'll drift. If, if there's, you, you've got to be the anchor. You've got to be the root. You've got to be the stable one in there. And uh, um, I'll tell you, um, that's a sobering experience when somebody asks you to be the man in their child's life. Uh, it's non-negotiable. Uh, you must shape. You must sharpen, and you must shoot your arrows. Uh, that's what it was talking about earlier, guys. A quiver full of arrows. Your arrows are your children. You want to keep them sharp. You, you, you want a quiver full. You, you want children. You want to, you know, I, I, back in the times that was written, the more children, the more the merrier. Today, we may not have that same philosophy, and uh, but your children are your arrows. Keep them sharp. And, uh, and when you launch them from your bow, you want them to you want them to be sharp. You want to shoot them far. You want them to be prepared, and to wherever that arrow lands, wherever your child ends up in this world, you want them to prepare. You want them to to pierce uh, other people's lives. You want them to make a difference. And uh, um, as you follow Christ, you cut a path of clarity uh, that they can then step through and follow in your footsteps. Guys, you, you, you're you're you lead the way. You're you're taking the machete and you're cutting that path, and 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 your kids will follow only if you're a good follower. If you're not following Christ, if you're not doing the things that, you know, they may follow you out of guilt. They may follow you out of a fear, but uh, you want them to follow you because they see something in your lives that they want to be part of. They they want what you've got, and uh, and uh, and there again that peace that joy all those things is what they what they what they want uh what i said again you lead a family for a hundred years by following christ today with your whole heart you'll never know the impact you make today um, by leading your kids in a christ-filled home and uh it's 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 those blessings that uh you'll never see you'll never probably be able to count a man in the God is a, a man of God is the greatest evidence for or against Christianity. Again, are you God centered or self centered? It's it's that simple. Well, guys, we're coming to the end, but um, I, I want you to remember one thing. Write this down. If you don't remember anything else, you've got twelve years, twelve years to make your child the teenager that you want them to be. You think you've got a child for a lifetime. Well, you do. 
But usually by the time they're a teenager, by the time they're 12, the mold's set. You know, what you get is what you get. They're either going to be quick to anger. They're either going to be loving. They're going to be gentle. They're going to be um, seeking kingdom things in their own life. You've got 12 years. And when when you say, I've got a teenager that I just, I know, they all go through the growing stages and the hormones and all that. But when it comes to the basics, you've got 12 years, 12 years in their lifetime. Make them the teenager you want them to be. And that teenager will probably be the adult that you want them to be. It's a, you've got 12 years. Um, it's intentional. You've got to spend time. Uh, guys, it's, it's, you, you've got to find time. What's important in your life will not be important in their life unless you uh, reciprocate. What's important in their life, you've got to be a part of. I don't care if it's summer swimming league. Be the parent that stands on the end of the pool in the 99-degree heat with the stopwatch volunteering to keep score. Your kids see that. If it's important to them, then volunteer. If, uh, if your kids are in band, be the parent that says, hey, I'll ride the yellow bus back and forth to the ball games and, and take a head count on the way home to make sure everybody gets there. Um, uh, be a volunteer. Um, let them see you. Take food to a neighbor. Take food to somebody sick. Let them see that. Let them see how this works. Um, uh, next time you walk in, Mickey D's, and there's somebody asking for spa, uh, spare change, uh, um, buy a number one. Give it Give it to your seven-year-old and say, hey, why don't you go out there and give it to them? Wow, what a... What a great time to share Matthew 25, you know? I was hungry, you know? Um, did you feed me? Um, man, you, you can take those small moments. Uh, guys, get up on Saturday morning. It doesn't matter where you go. Your kids are young. It doesn't matter if you're going to the bank, post office, barbershop, get a haircut. They'll be in the car with you. They, they, they like to go. Um, and, and you've got a captive audience. I mean, let me tell you what, some of the best conversations I had with my children was in the cab of a truck. They couldn't turn on the TV. They couldn't get away from you. Man, they were mine. And I could share anything I wanted with them. And, uh, and, and, and it's easy when you got a little boy, they could care less. Uh, you, you can go to the hardware store and stand there and let them hold a hammer and, you know, do whatever. Little girls are a different story. But let me tell you what, when my... When my daughter, she's 33 now, but when she was low, I could talk pocketbooks with the best of them. If you want to spend time with your daughter, say, hey, let's go look at pocketbooks. Learn pocketbooks. You, you've learned everything else. It, it's not that hard. But if you want to spend time with your kids, the things that are important to them, let it be important to you. Um, because if you want church to be important, if it's, uh, if it's important to you, uh, they'll reciprocate if, if you can spend time with them. So... Uh, so guys, I'm I'm just asking you, uh, um, spend time with them, uh, take them to the funeral home. Let me tell you, that's that's tough on a kid, but let me tell you what, that's real life. Sometimes life sucks, but they need to see it. We're talking about spending life, either in heaven or in hell, and they need to realize that this is a that's a reality. Um, now, when it's age appropriate, but but kids need to know that there 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 are there are people who die, and they need to have made a decision, and uh, and not a better way for a kid to realize that you know life doesn't last forever. But uh, when it's appropriate and you feel like they're mature enough, spend time with them, and you and you can talk uh, kingdom things all the way home after going to a funeral home. So. Guys, if you've learned nothing else, you know, fathering, fatherhood, manhood, it's intentional. We've got to step up for too long. We've, uh, we've, we stood by the wayside. We've, we've, we've given it over to our wives, and, and, uh, and thank goodness they have. But uh, we've given that over, and uh, we've given over positions in the church. You look at the church. 80% of the positions, teaching positions, are filled by women. Men, where are we? Why aren't we teaching a class? I mean, you, you, we may not feel like we can teach an adult class, but you can teach a, a child's class or a preteen class or a, you know, there, there's 
places other than ushering. We need to step it up. And, uh, and uh, guys, it's, uh, uh, we're one generation away from extinction. I'm, I'm telling you, there will be no church unless we step it up. And uh, well, you've heard our pastor say people are coming every three weeks and uh, once, a, once a month. And uh, I don't know what that looks like, guys. I, honest to God, don't. Um, I don't know. I don't, I, I'd love to be on the fly on the wall when, when men wake up on a Sunday morning, they roll over and they look at their wife and go, you want to go to church? I don't, I don't know. What's the weather look like? Have we got something better to do? I, I, I can't, I can't fathom that, but man, we've got, we're going to have to get up and say, all right, we're going to church and, and get up and get dressed and, uh, and be there, set that example. And, um, if it's not important and, um, then our kids are going to see right through it. So uh, with all that said, man, I love you and thank you. And I uh, I hope when all this is done and over, uh, uh, if, if if only one person heard it, uh, one young father who's in the, the throes of it right now with young kids, uh, I wish you the best. Follow some guidelines. There's help out there. And uh, uh, God has a plan. So... Thank you. I appreciate it and uh, look forward to seeing you in church.